is Joe Man. I am your host of today's broadcast, Insane Layer 13, as we're preparing to get a round for the 19th round of XRL's X3 division here at the Circuit of Americas outside of Austin, Texas, in the great United States of America. I am joined once again by two time NX1CS champion, PZ French from Man. PZ, we're preparing to get underway here at Coda, a circuit that's been on the Formula 1 calendar for about a decade by this point. In your opinion, what can we be looking forward to today? Well, hello everyone, welcome. Uh, stuff to expect for today, I mean, the track is really wide. A lot of turns that have been copied from uh, actual other racetracks. Uh, a lot of elevation changes, there is a lot of opportunities to to pass. There's a lot of hard working zone at the, at the end of actual straightaways. So, I'm expecting to see a lot of dogfights all around but for that i kind of need to see where people place themselves on the grid and their actual lap times to see if potentially we can have some good fights in the pack yeah all right so as it stands right now i will go ahead and say this i'm expecting we're probably going to see a lot of uh, track violations and a lot of time penalties due to track violations today. Historically, within XRL, when they run here at Coda, especially if there's a late race yellow, races are not won by the fastest people, but just by people who avoid getting time penalties. I've seen so many times here, two, three drivers slugging it out for the top spots. Yellow flag falls in the last five laps, and it's someone who's way off the pace who crosses the line six that ends up winning the race. It's a uh, Disappointingly common occurrence here, but that means we could see a wild card winner today. Uh, I guess the way this track is, the nature, its weird, flowy nature, has made it very almost incompatible with properly racing side by side. Because you make a great point, PZ. The track is very wide throughout large sections of it, but then you get down to the basically the entirety of sector three. So basically after the back straightaway, and you have a whole lot of corners that are constantly switching back and forth on each other at very slow speeds. Uh, yesterday in the dev race, Zola ran out of fuel with a lap and a half to go, and he was trying to move off the track to let faster cars go. And the game penalized him 15 seconds for moving off track in that slow section in turns 12, 13, 14, 15, just because it was considered a track violation. So I'm expecting a lot of track violation penalties to be given in today's event. All right, here we are. We load onto the circuit now. Uh, Eighteen drivers will be taking the green flag in today in today's event. Veli is serving a qualifying ban. I don't actually remember Veli racing with us. I wonder if he's a different driver who has just moved to PC. Oh yeah, that's right. Now that now that um, EA have finally fixed their shit with this game, maybe we'll see a little bit more people playing on PC. Some of the drivers of note, uh, Dragonborn Whoop. has run in about four races, and he's won two of those four races. He won at Zanvort in a race that was wet pretty much the entire time, and Dragonborn Dragonborn won that race by underfueling by seven laps. He also won last week's race at Suzuka in a slugfest between himself and Schumacher. In the end, Dragonborn was more daring on the last lap going into turn two and won due to that. Manufacturer's Championship also has gotten really interesting. McLaren has was been the strongest car for the majority of the season. I don't think you were there for it though, uh, PZ, but when we ran at Spa most significantly, I'm sure you remember very well that I missed most of the season due to personal stuff, so yeah, nice. I can't really throw back to these days. All right, well, when we were running at Spa, one second, I just got a message. All right, so yeah, Veli is actually Plastic Love, and Plastics have had a few decent runs earlier in the year. So uh, early on at Baku, I don't know, I don't remember exactly when you dropped out. I know you were with us when we did. Uh, Saudi Arabia, I don't remember beyond that. But when we were at Baku, uh, the McLarens found a setup that let them run 0 and 2 on their wings while everyone else had to run closer to 8 or 10. That gave the McLarens a 10 mile an hour advantage in the straightaways and they were losing 
no time in the corners whatsoever. So from that point up until about Spa, the McLarens, without a doubt, were the best team on the grid, with Herbago being their number one driver. And it turned into Schumacher had a points lead because Schumacher has shown up to and finished every race. And Herbago, who was closing because he was just racking off race win after race win after race win. Uh, at Spa, everything changed. Apparently, the McLarens ended up making a mistake, and Herbago was overfueled by four laps at the start of that race. But even with that hang-up, he was still way faster than everyone else. However, at Spa, the McLarens were losing a full second in Sector 2 and only gained about 1.1 seconds between Sectors 1 and 3 combined. Schumacher was faster in Sector 2. A late race restart happened with about seven laps to go, and with DRS enabled, it looked like it would be a potential repeat of the famous 2000 fight between Hakkinen and Schumacher. Only this time, it would be a Ferrari going after a McLaren. And going down the back straightaway, Schumacher, in his Ferrari, went to the outside of Herbago's McLaren, and under braking, Herbago drifted wide, trying to pinch Schumacher, but in the process, he overtaxed his tires with a overloaded fuel cell and with no downforce spun and fell all the way back to eighth now he was able to rush back and finish third in the end but that race at spa has basically become the turning point of the season after spa herbago got pole at zanvoort and has not earned any other points since he crashed out on a lap four restart at zanvoort from the lead he crashed out at monza he crashed out at singapore and he willingly retired on the track at Suzuka. As Dragonborn sets the first lap of the section, session 136.343, immediately topped by Herbie in a 136.211. Uh, in the Manufacturers Championship, Mantic Meerkat has actually kind of taken over and still brings home good points for the McLaren camp. And McLaren and Ferrari have traded the top spot in the Manufacturer titles back and forth for a long section of the season. While Schumacher has an 80-plus point lead in drivers, only in the last two weeks has Ferrari started to eke out an edge in the Manufacturers. However, Flavor is, from what we understand, very demotivated after some controversy that happened in the last week's race. We don't know if that will continue. The McLarens are expected to rebound this week, though I have been saying that for the last few weeks with no result. And also, the Red Bulls have been surging as of late. Dr. Phil joined in his first race along with Dragonborn, and him, coupled with Zola, have earned more points than any other team in the last four weeks of the season. So there is a possibility we may see a three-way shootout for the manufacturer's title between Ferrari, Red Bull, and McLaren. In the driver's championship, it looks like Ferrari is going to take it with Schumacher, but the fight for fifth in points and the fight for second in points is still very much alive. It looks like it's going to be Meerkat versus his teammate Herbago and the Red Bull Azola fighting for second in driver's championship Ooh. points. Jeleven goes even faster, 35.567 now. And then, in addition, uh, fifth, Flavor has that station right now because he has attended every race thus far this season. But there are a lot of drivers who are surging late that may end up overtaking him. There is also the fight for... Uh, there are other fights lower down the grid, but we're not really too focused on them right now. Anyways, enough talking about that. We turn our focus onto the racetrack at this stage in the event now. After that kind of rundown and catch up over the season as a whole. <laughs> Really, lot of, lots of infos to take in. I'm really surprised you can remember all that. But I mean, you've been there for every, for every race, so... Watching XRL Dave as he makes his way around the circuit right now. 18 drivers. Now we have two drivers serving qualifying bands, Herbago and Veli. Veli is plastic love, so that's 16 Ooh. drivers. 5 for 50 spots, and Dave spins, coming into turn 18. The lap is still legal. He can still continue, but the problem is it's not like normal 
Q1 sessions here where you can just throw down a lap and you'll be fine. You actually have to put together a proper lap if you want to advance to the following round. This may not be a good scenario for Dave. Uh, of note, Dr. Phil went out and set his lap on hards of 37.365. So Phil, likely a sleeper shot, shout out for the pole position, considering he's only about one, only about 1.8 seconds off on the hard tires. I think Phil might be straight saving sauce for Q2 and Q3. Eggedy sets the time 38.665 on the medium tires. So we know he can go faster going medium to soft, but it's not looking good if he's that far off of even Dr. Phil when he's on a faster tire compound. Nine drivers have set their times thus far. Zola will be the 10th to set a time. He is currently making his way through the S's. Twenty six point three two three for Zola, and Zola also is one of those drivers who is on medium tires. Zola, oh, as he invalidates in the middle of his flying lap out of the last part of the S's. So I have to back down and start recharging his ERS. Uh, Zola ran in the dev race yesterday, and the times that he set the dev race were 133s. So keep an eye on Zola. Might go for pole position with a 133 time. Dave Fratter's Imperium Flavor, Callboy, and Schumacher all on outlaps right now. Also, Dragon and Mercedes AMG both are on outlaps. Neither of them feel very confident with their time. We're already more than halfway through Q1. Only nine drivers have set times this far. We don't really know who's at risk of going out and Imperium with a big slide there out of 15. And it looks like Imperium actually engages the ERS, and he invalidates. He invalidates out of 19, and that might compromise, and they may not let Imperium take this next lap as a proper flyer. No, they will. They'll give it to him. So Imperium's able to stick with it, and Imperium will get a shot at getting this lap in. <sighs> I don't think the game is programmed to do that. Also, uh, you want to hear something else for some chaos, PZ? Bring me the chaos. It's the only thing I need. Uh, it is predicted to be a full wet race today. Oh my god. I probably shouldn't have said that. I mean, I mean, I see, I mean, see, my... I mean seeing cars sliding around, I see enough of that uh, going outside in real life, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, tell me about a European winter. Yes. Uh, and just letting everybody know, I do have a proactive and visceral hatred towards snow. And that's a 135.587 for Schumacher. That is two hundredths of a second slower than the provisional poll by Jay LeBand. And you we're talking about 133s. I'm kind of well, Schumacher set that time that. on the mediums, though. Schumacher set that time on mediums, and the other thing is that Zola has not set his lap, and Zola's been the fastest one thus far. Zola won Dev, and I was sorry, it was actually XRRL, apparently, that Zola ran out of fuel and not Dev. Uh, there was a realistic race yesterday. I did not get a broadcast Ooh. back because I was broadcasting towards 24 hours of Daytona. Uh, at this stage, here's some things to take in consideration. Flavor. His fastest time, 140.466 on the mediums. It's not looking very good for him. It really isn't. Right definitely, now, it's looking like definitely Flavor not. Will be the driver Maybe, squeezed out. I didn't keep an eye on him, so I'm 
probably made a mistake somewhere. I mean, it's really easy to lose the back end on the uh, on the replica of uh, Turkey Turn Eight, yeah, sixteen through eighteen. We've seen a um, uh, who was that that lost the the back end of his card in the stern. That was Dave, I believe, in the Alfa Romeo. That's another thing to consider. The Alphas, they started off the season relatively rough, but as the season has gone on, both Alpha males have significantly improved their pace. Uh, no wins yet, but they were in contention for wins at Monza and at Singapore, and they also brought home great Improvement for flavor. Well. Cuts up three on the third of the second of his second lap at 137-137. Something else considered with Flavor's lap, he did that with no ERS as well. When he started, he only had about like 10% ERS in the tank on the start of that lap. I thought it was a cooldown lap, honestly. Uh. So with that in mind, how much do you think we can cut off his stun if he actually used ERS? Maybe a second? I think if he had a proper amount of ERS, I think he probably would be there with Gallminator and Dragon. 136.5 something. Only half a second? I think only half a second. I don't think ERS is going to save you quite as much here. Uh, McLaren has had an incident. That is Mantic Meerkat, who has come nearly to a dead stop right before the hairpin. Now, he's on an outlap right now, so he's going to try and go again. Oh, and XRL Dave just improved. 136, yep. 491. So right now, Zola is the driver on the outside looking in because he has yet to set his time. Fratters is on the bubble. We are anticipating that Zola should be able to knock him out without issue. Assuming Zola gets a proper lap in, he's on the medium tires. Four minutes left in this sec section. Looks looks decent, maybe a 140, 136. Yes, 136, 612. That's only good enough so that... for 12. Yeah, but Flavor's on the medium. I mean, Zola's on the mediums. In fact, right now, Zola, Flavor, and Eggity all on the mediums. I'm interested to see if I, if any of those three go ahead and jump onto softs. Oops. Because Imperium and Fratters, they've set their best laps on the softs, and they have not shown a lot of competency. But all it takes is both of them setting something up, and they could advance to the next round. I'm very interested to see if if, if A1 in that range from 12th to 16th go back, goes back out again. Dave is out of fuel, apparently, going down the back straightaway. Mercedes, uh, his fastest lap of 136.511 was set on soft tires that had four laps of wear on them, so that's an interesting thing to take note of. I mean, and Fratus is coming the, out. Next man across the line with potentially an improvement on his lap time is Mercedes, who is on the flyer at the moment. Lost a tenth He's... at the end of sector two. Top three all retire. They all feel confident with a 35, and I agree. I think, frankly, if you're in the if you're 36 four or lower, I think you're going to advance by default. And Imperium oh. retires in the pits. Imperium says, I can't go any faster than a 38.854. So that, with that in mind, everyone is safe from 14th up. It just comes down to what can Fratters do? Can Fratters move up? Flavor is in, Eggity is in, and Zola is in mm -hmm. with slow, medium tires. I don't know if Flavor got that notification because he has come out now on track with a set of softs. Ah, if the retirement happened a little earlier, Flavor wouldn't have come out and wouldn't have burned through that set of rubber, but it's not the case. And Fratters has invalidated this lap. So Fratters is only going to get one shot at Ooh. this. Mantic Meerkat jumped up to fourth with a 135.720. Very strong. Took a little longer than anticipated, but he is showing some strength here. Last full wet weight race we had was Zanvort. And at Zanvort, Herbago had pole position but crashed out. Then it turned into the two Red Bulls trying to get around the Haas of Dragonborn, only for the two Red Bulls to crash into each other. And then 
Dragonborn just kind of walked away the rest of the race, finished with something like an 18 second victory at the 18 second lead at the end. Schumacher a very distant second, but we had so many yellow flag laps early on that being seven laps under field going to that race really helped him out. Keeping an eye on Friders at the moment. Was about to enter the back stretch. Yeah, Flavor Make did it. not get the notification that he doesn't need to spin this set of soft tires. He's going for it. So we might see Flavor move up the grid a bit. Both riders around turn 12, and what it's going to look like. Two tenths up. Quarter of a second up at the end of sector two. If you can keep the pace, I mean, he'll get closer to Imperium, but he, need, he needs to find around six tenths of a second, and that's the end of the session. I don't. My hopes are not too high for him to catch Imperium, but he might have found some pace. He yes, did. He has two seconds. The Nearly two seconds of improvement. Great job by Fratters, and Imperium will not advance to the next round while Fratters does. So both of the Alpines will advance into Q2. Neither of the Williams will. Ooh, that sounds flavor. very familiar. Flavor almost seven tenth of a second up at the end of sector two. Might be able to see at least somewhat of a more realistic pace. Of the man around. Really wide at the end of 18. He'll be the last driver to set a time, and when he does, when his pain move up, I think this he's is looking to much better. Yes. Alright. Right under right the 136. I believe I saw fifth. 157. That's fifth. I think I guessed correctly. You wow! You really, really guessed correctly compared to me. Yeah, I was one, one not thirty-five nearly that seven bullish. nine zero. Oh. Wow! So in the end, B Tech Jeleben is on top in the Haas Schumacher second fastest with the Ferrari, but he saves time on the Ooh. mediums. Colleyboy is third fastest on the Alpha. Mantic Meerkat fourth in the McLaren. Flavor fifth in the Ferrari. Peyton Doctor Phil sixth in the Red Bull. Seventh is Herbie in the Mercedes. Eighth is Dragonborn the Haas. Ninth is Dave in the Alpha Male. Tenth is Mercedes A M G in the Aston. Eleventh is Golden Air in the Alpine. Twelfth is Dragon in the Alpha Tari. The interesting thing is going to be will Dragon be able to make it to the end of this race? Thirteenth is Zola with Red Bull. Fourteenth is Eggity. Fifteenth is uh uh not I already forgot who it was that advanced. Curses. Fratters. I hate having mm. such a crap memory. <laughs> I believe, yeah, I believe Fryler's made it with the last spot. Yes, it is Fryler's. Okay. All right, so now qualifying round two. The important thing to consider, though, if the race is going to be full wet, like what we've been hearing, this could really, really mean that you can go out, you can burn through as many sets of soft tires as you want now. There's not really incentive to save any of them. Even if there's a late race yellow, if it's wet to the end, it doesn't really matter. First driver out on track, just like before. It is Dragonborn. Dragonborn. was the first driver to set time in the prior session, first time to set it in this session as well. He is followed right afterwards by Schumacher and then a McLaren that is Mantic Meerkat. I believe he is followed by AK Herbie and probably Coley Boy. No, that's no Dave, actually. That's Dave. As everybody is exiting the pits. Yeah, that's with like with Dragon with Dragonborn really cl clear off the field. Yeah, that's about two thirds of the field all out on track right immediately, and Herbie is kind of in a rough position. He's trapped, tucked up behind the McLaren, and he's gotten out for a Mayo, and a, uh, I believe that's a Williams, no, that's an Alpine behind him as well. So Herbie is kind I of in a frustrating position right now. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't think we have Williams who show up today. Yeah, it was Alpine. Now the Williams are showing up; they just didn't show up to Q2. Hmm. 
Yeah, they were the ones who both dropped out. One of them served in a qualifying ban, one of them just retired midway through the yeah. session and his time was overcome. So yeah, so it's an Alpine that Alpine and Alpha Romeo that is behind Herbie. So this little group here, they're all gonna kinda be in Mantic Meerkat's wake unless they all and they can't start backing out, because here's the thing, if they start backing up to try and open up the gaps, there's just more and more people behind that are gonna catch them. Right now, everyone with the exception of Flavor and Zola are out on track on outlaps, or in the case of Schumacher and Dragonborn, are all, they're already beginning their flyers. So as uh, as people are starting their uh, their first lap doing Q2, I'm might want to start a little bit of a debate, um, and I will say that Dota is probably and wait for me to finish my sentence before saying anything. I think Coda okay. is probably the best track Herman Tico has designed during the 2010s. And I specifically mentioned during the 2010s because he has done Sepang like 10, 13 years before. I believe, I believe Sepang was made for the 1999 season. Yeah. So yeah, that was, I, that I'd, I'd, right. say, I'd say Coda is probably the best track Tokyo designed during the 2010s. So I will agree with that, but I also will say that's a very low bar to clear. Yeah, I mean, yeah, considering the, the year afterwards he did Sochi, we all make mistakes. Let's be, let's be honest. So I've never hate, I've never had quite the hate boner for Yas Marina that a lot of other people do. I really like Yas Marina now that it has been adjusted. They've taken away some of the stupid chicanes and made the circuit a little bit more rounder with a little bit more flow. I really, really like Yas Marina now. Outside of that and Coda, I don't think there are any other really significantly solid tracks that Tilk has done in the 2010s. Uh, and I'll go ahead and extend that probably into the late 2000s as well. I mean, we have... Uh, I mean, we've seen... Uh, in Dave has like crashed in the same corner that he did in the last qualifying session. Dave has crashed and turned 16 and 17. He's not the only one. There's a Mercedes that's gone off as well, just a little bit up the road from him. That was Herbie. So both Herbie and Dave have incidents on their laps. Now Dave's gonna, now Herbie's gonna stick with it and will cross the line. And so will Dave. So they both say they have enough fuel to go again, but still rough time for those two. Next man across the line. Uh, he diggity. Believe this. He diggity. But I think something went wrong on this run. Yeah. I look at his ERS. His ERS is nearly fully charged. So he backed out at some point. Now I think this lap is going to be his actual proper run. So we should see him improve quite a bit here if he's going to dump his entire ERS. Maybe about two thirds of a second. So, next man across the line. Who would that be? Um, Flavor, I believe. Yeah, it's going to be Flavor. So, yeah, but um, to continue a little debate, uh, let me remind you, during the 2010s, Tilkid also did, well, Besides Coda and the Sachi Autodrome, um, he did the Bud International Circuit for India and uh, how's it? The Yangam Circuit in South Korea as well. South Korea was a little bit of a miss, even though I really, even though I really can appreciate the track. But India, in India, was, I mean India is a banger because um, for those who don't know, I do. I have a complete sim rig, and you can find mods for pretty much everything. Not for F122, but for Assetto Corsa. I did a couple of laps on the track, and it's really good. Flavor jumps up to 6 with a 136.65. Okay, so I agree, but there's a difference between a track that's a great banner for putting down hot laps, and then a track that actually produces good racing. I don't think either India or... Uh, South Korea circuit 
put on very good shows. Now, I also will put part of the blame on the cars. I am one of those people who basically all the cars from about 2010 on, basically since they got rid of refueling, I have been very, very negative about. I'm not a fan, I'm not a big fan of 2009 either, but at least 2009 had refueling. And I think the extra added weight and the extra added dimensions of the cars with all with the mandatory no refueling has ruined a massive amount of Formula One's racing and the massive amount of its strategy. And the tracks at South the tracks in South Korea and the track in India did not help the case very much either. Yeah, they could be great banners to turn laps on, but I care about how good the track actually provides when it comes to on-track products. Are you able to follow? Are you able to make overtakes? Are you able to defend overtakes as well? I mean, there, I'm... there needs to be a nice balance between it all. I mean, yeah, sure, but I'm pl I mean, I'm, I'm solely placing India above South Korea because the pit entry in South Korea was. Uh, a bit of a bit of a kamikaze run, honestly. Yeah. Okay, so with this, my next question is, what do you think is Tilk's best track they designed in the 2000s? Uh, uh, all right, so you're you're at, uh, you're excluding Sepang since it was made in late 90s. Yeah. Well, also, uh, Sepang is such a banner that it's kind of impossible to really top it. The fact that it still hasn't come back is honestly a shame. Yeah, money's the name of the game. You know that. Yeah. Uh, two thousands. Uh, let me think. I know he's done the Yonkenheim ring. I mean, uh, oh no, that was uh, that was only a redesign. Uh. Hmm. I mean, if you want to include Hockenheim's redesign, you can. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm I'm focusing on uh, like uh, completely made up tracks from the ground. Uh, uh, let me think, let me think. Um, so... During the two, during the 2000s, um, I will say is Temple Park. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, as you mentioned, Yas Marina was made in 2009, but the... The good and best configuration we have uh, entered the calendar like two years ago. So yeah, I would, it was so for the 21 yeah, season finale. Yeah, I would not count all that, but... Same. Uh, I mean, during the 2000s, he made uh, Bahrain, Shanghai, Istanbul, and uh, Singapore, the forgotten track of uh, Valencia. And Yas Marina. So, so yeah, my, my vote is going yeah. towards Turkey. So I will go ahead and throw my vote towards Bahrain. Hmm. I mean, I would go Bahrain, I mean, ba Bahrain is China. It's not, not that then, bad of a track, honestly. Yeah, I would say Bahrain, then China, and then Turkey in that order. Valencia um, wasn't bad. I'd, I'd, but go, I'd go Turkey, I... Bahrain, and then Shanghai. Yeah, Shanghai. Yeah, basically those three. I think we agree. I I put Bahrain at the top, but any of those three I think are fine. Uh, Valencia is. I mean, it's a street circuit, and that also kind of makes it a lot harder to design a proper track with. Call it voice this time 35.825. So, real quickly, I want to turn our focus from the tracks to what's going on on our yeah. circuit right now. Uh, at the moment. Dragon is on the bubble with a 36.687. Dave is on the outside looking in, but he's on outlap 36.8. Flat, Gulminator is 12th with 36.811. He is coming across the line. He's going to improve all the way up into third. Oh. So Dragon is now outside looking in. Flavor is on the bubble with a 36.625. Oh. AK Herbie, mind you, set his fastest lap on mediums. He's now going out on a set of softs. Fratter still needs to improve. Agony needs to improve. Dave needs to improve. Dragon, this, things have gotten kind of interesting. Real quickly, to finish up what we were talking about earlier. Valencia, Valencia was a street circuit, and there's not a whole lot you can really do with street circuits. I mean, look at that. Uh, and even though there are a lot of street circuits that are bad that I don't like, like I despise Baku, I can't really hold it against it because street circuits, you're limited by the city's natural design. There's not a whole lot you can really pull off. Yeah. And Agony has crashed! Oh my goodness! Agony and Mercedes have crashed! Uh, and that means neither of them will advance! 
Agony and Mercedes have crashed in the S's, and they're not going to advance. I can't believe that. I mean, I can't believe that, but. I mean, I, I mean, it was. I mean, now it's a given for Agony, but Mercedes still had the chance to fight, but now it's it's all over. So, who's on the bubble now? That uh, would put flavor on the bubble. Uh. And it's uh, flavor on the bubble. It's quite, quite alarming. He's not going out right now. Well, he's out now. It looks like someone's improved. So now it's B Tech Jelebend on the bubble. I don't know if Flavor or Dragon will have enough time to get out there and put a proper flyer lap in to try and improve. I mean, they have time to go Game. out and do a single lap now. But, oh, there it is. Flavor's out. All right. Now the question is going to be Dragon. Here comes Dave to the final corners. Can Dave find what's basically eight tenths in order to jump into the top nine? Right now it's not oh, top yes, ten. It's the top nine. And he is. He's in. And B-Tech Jelebin is out. Now Jelebin's already responded. He's out on circuit, I believe, on soft tires. All right. And coming into the party now is e diggity AD, go ahead and include your audio. Big accident between you and Mercedes and the S's. What happened? Uh, I was uh, kind of focused on what was behind me because I, I think uh, one of the McLarens was on a hot lap there, and I was looking for a place to uh, to turn over, and I uh, kind of pull over, and I just uh, I looked up, and, and there he was. So no biggie. It's all right. Um, looking forward to the race. All right, it looks like it will be a full wet race, and you're going to be starting near the back on a very packed grid. Do you think you can survive the start? And more importantly, do you think you can survive to the end of the race and get points? I do. Um, I really do. I think uh, I'm just going to take it easy in the beginning and just kind of let things play out. So I'm, I'm looking for a good race. All right, thanks for jumping in and talking with us. Shame to see you knocked out qualifying like that. Thanks, man. Take care. Mm -hmm. All right, Jalebind is out on the... The track right now flavor is letting some other drivers by because flavor wants a relatively clean track when he starts his run fratters also trying to get his run in fratters is oh, up schumacher. right now by three quarters of a second First lap schumacher on the softs yeah 34.941 so at the last moment schumacher and, steals ooh. pole for away from zola jay leban cannot improve he's still 11th and Flavor started he has ERS enough to go. Yeah, B Tech 11, Flavor both have enough time to get a lap in. Dragon also has spun. Dragon has spun out of the last corner. He's not going to advance. He spun out of the last corner. The Dragon will not advance. What a Fratters. Fratters hits the line. He is now in his flyer as the clock has ticked over now in the session. Flavor only 5,000 of a second. Dragon has crashed out of one. It's over for Dragon. He will not advance. Flavor, oh, this is it. I understand now why Schumacher went out. Schumacher is giving Flavor a toe down the back straight away. Will this be enough Great team play. to get Flavor forward? How does it look like? Ooh. He's not up by enough, though. Flavor, by himself, needs to find a huge chunk of time in Sector 3, and I don't know if it's going to happen. Ooh, really late Apex. Entering 15. Jelebin, out of 18, into 19. One of the most difficult corners on the track because of the intense G-loading. And now into turn 20. Don't cut too tightly. You'll invalidate Ooh. your time. I was a massive Here mistake. comes Jelebin. Is he in? Jelebin's in. Dave is out. What a flavor. Flavor. He's in. Oh. I just he nicks Mercedes. What a Fratters. No, Fratters is invalidated. Flavor is in. By the skin of his teeth, but he is in. And that time that Schumacher gave Flavor down the back straightaway, added together with the time he gained in Sector 3, both together was enough to get him over Mercedes' time that he set before crashing. Oh. We will have 10 cars going into it for the final round of qualifying.
I just want to point out Beijing Duck to Phil with a 135 clean. Yeah, <laughs> 135 dead flat. <laughs> That's interesting stuff. Hey, you, so it you might like, be. F we know you like to see this. Yeah, this is some good shit here. Uh, it looks like it's going to be uh, Dr. Phil trying to send the Ferraris to the ranch again. <laughs> you eat your I don't know if get I don't know if you get that reference. Uh, Dr. Phil has a history of delinquent kids that are brought onto his show. Because Dr. Phil hosts a, a talk show where he brings in people with mental issues and stuff, and he pretends to help them on a live stage audience and then normally ships some of, some of them off to like a training facility or a camp or something and he, ought, he likes to send kids to ranches so that's the joke i mean as long as it's <sighs> not the uh the ranch dimension as in the the rancher dressing i've seen some <laughs> I, i've seen i've seen some i've seen a couple of wasps been sent to the ranch dimension but eh. I I am so internet. thankful you I'm so thankful you thought of that ranch and not a uh, much worse ranch that I don't think XR would like us talking about. I mean, <laughs> I don't even if I do try like really hard for ranch dressing around my place, which is the Baguette Republic. I don't think I've found a bottle of that. Uh, one thing real quickly to note before we get into the next round, the top times all are within a second. Uh, 1.1 seconds of each other. Yeah, and the top nine are all within a second. So, yeah, relatively close for the top ten as we advance now into our final round of qualifying. Uh, we are running just a little bit behind schedule, and honestly, I think this broadcast is going to go a bit late as well, but... And yet again, Dragonborn being the first driver out. Yeah, he seems to really make a point of it to do so. I mean, being the closest to the pit exit also helps. Bit of a is it just me or is there like a haze in the sky? Mm. I know it's cloudy, but it looks like there's like a haze. I mean, it was definitely getting cloudy during the end of Q2. Alright, so the entire field, with the exception of Flavor and BTEC 11, are out on track right now. Uh, it will be Dragonborn who sets the time. And Dragonborn set a time early on in Q1, but his time was immediately overdone. He set a time early in Q2, and he, that one didn't get over then until late in the session. And that was by Schumacher. And then very at the very end, Dr. Phil. Uh, what will Dragonborn set that everyone will be chasing in the final shootout for pole? And then behind Dragonborn is the Alpine of Galminator. So both Ferraris are in, both Red Bulls are in, so we could see some team, some more team play shenanigans going on in that team, in both of those teams. Uh, we also have both Hasses. Oh yeah, good point, we do have both Hasses, you're right, I didn't notice that. So eight of our ten drivers on a flying lap as of now. As Dragonborn flies down the back straightaway, top speed on that car. 200 miles an hour. 201. 201 on my screen. You say 200. All right. Either way, yeah. 
That seems to be his top speed. What is Gulminator's? I'm curious to see if anyone has a setup that's prepared for wet weather racing or not and have some more downforce. Gulminator only 198. Herbie, oh, Herbie is going is way faster. I can see a 327 kilometers an hour. Call it boy 202. I'll let you read Schumacher's speedometer when I'm watching Dragonborn finish up his lap. That's a I did not catch Schumacher, sadly. Uh, Zola is at 201, and Dr. Phil, I think, invalidated his lap and was just staying out on track to try and give Zola a tow. Oh, Mentic Meerkat has a struggle reaching over 300 kilometers an hour. And Herbie down, that's a 35653. Golly, Golly 35.290. Next man across the line is Schumacher. He what set time in 34. What can we Q2. expect? Yes, 34.7. 34.7. Here comes Zola. 35.070. And for Meerkat. 36.322. Yep. Galevin's was... already come. Oh, Galevin aborted his flyer. Well, aborted on his outlap. Came in. He's on another outlap now, trying to get running again. Uh, so he'll have relatively clean track when he does his flyer. Flavor and Dr. Phil still have yet to get out on track. I think that might be because those two may have burned up all of their soft tires. I was not expecting that good of a lap from Mentic Meerkat when I saw that he had really, he really struggled to break up the 300 kilometers an hour barrier at the end of the backstretch. So maybe he has the I think so, Meerkat the has so a kind wet of a little setup. bit wet setup, yeah. Yeah. Well, the best ways to get a wet setup on the car is to get the tire, take out as much camber from the tires and as much tow from the tires as possible so you have as much rubber contacting the road at all times. Uh, add downforce, obviously, and then typically you also want to go ahead and disconnect or really loosen up your anti-roll bars as well. Those are traditionally the best ways to get better setups for a wet weather scenario. But with the way this game is, and the way that feels like there is no front anti-roll bar whatsoever, and it feels like the front two tires are always pointing in different directions, I don't know what you can do in this game, so. <laughs> oh, all right, I'm sorry. Uh... All right, here comes Jalebind through the final corners now. Ooh. They have a twitch out of 19 there. Yeah, committed a little too early. But that's enough for a sub-36. Yeah, that's the five, best five, time nine. thus far. Dr. Phil is on an outlap. Flavor still has yet to come out on track. And already we're seeing more drivers come back out. That's Meerkat that's coming out, as is Gulminator. What can Dr. Phil do?
All right, through the final section here, what can Dr. Phil pull out? Flavor finally coming out onto the circuit. He has waited the better part of nine minutes, so Flavor is only going to really get like one or two laps to get a lap in here. But whatever he does, he's guaranteed a top ten spot at least. Ooh, it's really good looking for Dr. Phil at the moment. Yeah, it's thanks 34 Low is maybe 35.4. Right now, it is Schumacher and Zola at the top of the sheets. Flavor is the only driver who has yet to set a time. The next driver to cross the line will be Flavor, but then after him will be Galmanair. Galmanair trying to improve from a 38.5.893. He is down by about half of a tenth in Sector 1, though. And he invalidates in the uh, coming out of the S's. So he'll have to back out immediately, start saving fuel and recharging the ERS. Keeping so that way he can Magic try and get Mirror one Cat. more shot at it. Keeping an eye on Mantic Meerkat. He is the driver that can improve the most of our lap time. And he already almost gained a tenth in Sector 1. Oh, and that's three tenths at the end of sector two. We can f find another two tenths in sector three. He'll miss. Dragonborn's retired in the pits, so Dragonborn is sticking with that 35.7, interestingly enough. Oh, this is looking better than a... Meerkat. Yes. Yeah, 35, 4, oh. 7, 7. That's good enough for fifth. Callie Boy, Zola, Schumacher, and Glebend all rushing to the line right now. And Dr. Phil now retires in the pit. So Phil also says, I can't go any faster. Schumacher trying to get to the line in time to get a faster lap. Schumacher is up in Sector 1. And lap time for Flavor, that's a low 35, 3 to 7. That's good enough for 4th. What of Galminator next? Galminator has crashed! Galminator has crashed in 18, so Galminator will not be able to improve his time. Because time's up, over, plow! Next driver to hit the line, who is on a lap, is AKA Herbie. Is he up, and will he be able to improve at all? He's only about a tenth out from Gilebin. Second, 34.8, so that's two drivers in the 34s now. Meerkat comes into the pits, he's out of fuel. What about Collie Boy? He's invalidated. Flavor is down on time. Schumacher is up. Schumacher might find even faster time here in this final sector. Oh, sub 34 and a half. Yes, by <laughs> clear margin. <gasps> wow, 34.1. 34 and that's another point for Schumacher and another point for the Ferrari in their quest to go back to back on titles. Gilebin will be the last driver to cross the line who's in position to improve his times by a good tenth. Maybe even two. Might be able to overtake Mantic Meerkat. And by a clear margin of third! Well, Set 35! So three drivers make it into the 34s! Incredible stuff! But here's the big thing though 
This means nothing because the race is going to be wet. But your pull sitter, once again, will be Schumacher SF7. So there's your results. Look at that. At the end, Schumacher, you know, last section, the entire field is within 1.1 seconds. This session, only the top five are within 1.1 seconds. Only the top four are within a second of him. Again, rain is going to be different. You're going to want to have a good rain setup, obviously. But this is really, really, really impressive for the Ferrari team as they continue to perform strongly as this season goes on. I'm honestly very impressed that he's able to, he, they're able to keep stealing great runs and qualifying like that. All right, so while we are in the wait until we get into the race proper, we're going to go ahead and look through the point standings as they are right now for X3. Manufacturers, this is what it looks like right now. 10th is AlphaTauri with 67 points. 9th is Williams with 82. 8th is Aston Martin, 99 points. So Aston just one point away from getting triple digits. Williams and AlphaTauri, they're right now races. I think we only have six races left, including this one. They need to make something happen fast if they want to properly make it into the 100-point tally. Seventh is Alpine with 118. Sixth is Mercedes with 127. Fifth is Alfa Romeo with 133. Fourth is Haas with 155. Dragonborn's two wins have really helped that team turn around. Third is Red Bull at 257. They are making a late race, late season sprint to try and steal the manufacturer. So it looks like it'll be a three-way manufacturer's fight. Second is McLaren with 338. Leading is Ferrari 378. So 40 points in favor of the Ferrari right now in manufacturers. And Drivers Championship. 20th is BTEC 11 with 3 points. 19th is V8 Irons with 6. 18th is Imperium SG. He has 12 points. 17th is Galminator with 25 points. 16th is Ferraris with 31. 15th is Higgs Boston with 32. 14th is Mercedes AMG with 38. There is a tie for 12th between Dr. Phil and Eggity. They both have 43 even. 11th is Snake with 48. 10th is Lovella, X5, uh, Lovella 15th with 54. 9th is Dragonborn with 62 points. 8th is Collie Boy 65. AK Herbie is 7 with 66. Day is 6 with 68. Flavor has a gap over them. He is 5th with 91, but the way that Dave, Hurry, Dragonborn, and Kali have all been surging late, Flavor's spot 5th in, in the title is not secured right now. 4th is Mantic Meerkat with 146 points. 3rd is Herbago with 192. He has not earned any points since getting pole at Zanbort over a month ago. 2nd is Zola with 206 points, leading the championship by a 81-point margin is Schumacher SF7, 287 points at the moment.
Should be getting onto the track in about a minute here. There we are, 20 seconds. And then we'll have a warm-up lap and then get underway proper. Another thing to consider, uh, wet weather tires, whether they be full wets or intermediates, they typically take about two to three laps to properly get up to operating temperature. Their fall-off is almost non-existent, and you are allowed to run an entire race on a single set of intermediate or wet tires if you so choose. However, typically the fall-off isn't so much that you can just avoid a pit stop altogether. And everyone is on full wets. That's interesting. I mean, it's raining. It's raining pretty hard. Well, last time the I remember. Cameras. Yeah, last time I remember a full wet, not even near me, but a full wet start with Zandvoort Ooh, in F1 2020. Schumacher almost losing it in the S's. Yeah, that. And when we and that happened, it was literally impossible to see the cars in front of you unless you were in the top two positions, <coughs> because the top two had almost no one or actually no one in front of them. So I'm a little bit concerned as to what visibility is going to look like near the back of the grid. And Herbago, every single. Every single start for the last four weeks, he has spun or crashed his car on the warm-up lap. And he's done it again. But yeah, I think Schumacher, Herbie, and maybe Jeleben and Zola will be in good position on the start, assuming they get off the line well. Everyone from about fifth on down, I fear for them. Oh, and that's Dr. Phil who spins out, coming out of the hairpin. This is just the warm-up <laughs> lap. We could be in for a very chaotic event here at Coda. Well, that's what the fun's all about, I guess. If you can't have a good, clean race, at least you can have a chaotic, crazy one. So... <clears throat> yeah, let's pray for the safety car not to be out on every single lap of this race. Well, uh, there is, is a the limit. Only thing you only I'm get... For, that's it. Well, you are given only a maximum of five full-course safety cars in an event, and I think you can only get, like two VSCs in addition to that. I've seen the game like actually glitch out before in the prior game. Uh, they say it's a new engine, it's not, it's bullcrap. But in the last game at Catalonia in X3, there was a glitch where even though nothing was happening, they were automatically throwing safety cars all the time. And they still ran out of safety cars and virtual safety cars. So the last four laps actually had racing in that event. So. There is, we are, we are guaranteed at least some laps under green just because of the way this is going to be. So I'm going to ride on board with uh, Zola at the initial start. Go ahead and cut me off if you see anything significant happening in the back. I'm in fully anticipating a stack up in the first two or three corners, though. As usual. All right, here we go. Lights going. Four lights. Five lights. As lights out, away we go here at Kona, and Herbie got a great jump against Schumacher. Herbie is going to try and out drink Schumacher to turn one. Uphill they go. As they send it into turn one, Schumacher is going to fall down through the grid. Might end up getting hit by Jelevin. He barely keeps together. Jelevin sideways right for the Red Bulls as they're side by side. Dr. Phil loses his out of position to Zola. Meerkat is in sixth. Coley Boy seventh. Oh my goodness, this is actually bad. I'm right on board with Herbago. He's right behind two other cars. You can barely see anything outside of the wing of the driver directly ahead of you. Kinda glad you bring the kinda glad you brought the pitch back down as well. 
Oh yeah, biggest uh, biggest mover up is actually Rubago, as you've mentioned. Biggest mover down is Flavor, who's lost 6 spot and is now 12th outside the points. Not looking too great for the Constructors' Championship <clears throat> for the Marinello team. In the slower speed sections here, there's a lot more visibility, but the moment you start getting up to pace, you cannot see anything oh, there except was a for the rear wing of the driver ahead of you. Of Gominator and Rubago. Oh. Thankfully, none slip. Flavor finds the gap and overtakes Gominator, who was looking for Rubago ahead. Oh, and Schumacher's gotten by Herbie. Oh, and Herbie spins! And out of the 19th corner, Herbie spins! Herbie had the lead, lost it in turn 18, and then spins out of 19, and the driver, who outran everyone to turn one, falls to eighth now. So Schumacher leads once more. So we stay green for the first lap, and no one had to pit for damage. The biggest loser, I would argue, is Gulminator, because he's eight seconds off the back of the grid right now. So there's a little bit more visibility in the S's, because you're not looking straight forward. You're looking a little bit more side to side, so you can kind of see the cars at angles as you're going through the S's. But once you get out of the S's and you're starting to run down the hill into the hairpin, visibility drops away significantly. Zola is fine with Dragonborn right now. And I also Drag want to point race between a Haas and a Red Bull. Really want to point out Schumacher is... I mean, we're a lap and a half in the race, and Schumacher already built up a, over sec uh, a gap of over a second from second place. And looks like there's still a fight going on between Zola and Dragonborn. They've been side by side for about a third of a lap, but finally Zola backs out of it. So Dragonborn might have a more <coughs> wet weather, a more hybrid setup equipped right now. Because he is making moves. He only started, I think, eighth, and he's already up into the fourth position. So you have a Ferrari walking away, but once you get to second on down, it's Haas, Red Bull, Haas, Red Bull, McLaren. Alfa Romeo, Mercedes, Alfatari, McLaren. Uh, Herbago gained a bunch of positions early on, but he has stalled out in 10th. As Schumacher is still clocking out fastest laps. And that's a two second gap. Second place. And mind you, Schumacher didn't even lead the <clears throat> entirety of the first lap. Schumacher only took the lead going into turn 20 because Herbie spun out of 19. So right now I'm looking at Schumacher as the base center for at least the beginning of this race. Fratters and Dave both get by Mercedes oh. coming out of one and penalty. our first time penalty, a.k.a. Herbie. Also, the field in general Ooh. is just starting to spread out a bit now, so visibility oh. isn't nearly Rubag as much of a problem. Rubago has his nose in the gearbox. Of Dragon's Tuscatory. <clears throat> Dragon kind of holding up Herbago, Flavor, and Veli, who is formerly known as Plastic Love. But it looks like Dragon has a good run gained onto the straights, and that's all it really takes to stay ahead at the moment. I do mean at the moment. In these wet weather conditions, I'd rather have a car that's slower in a straight line and has more handling, but... Mercedes and Fratters continuing their fight for 13th and 14th, but something else to take note of, uh, Dr. Phil is now finding himself sandwiched by Hosses. He's got a Hoss holding him up in front and a Hoss pressuring him from behind. Flavor and Veli in a fight for 11th and 12th. 
Right now, Flavor is defending against Veli. But it seems like Flavor and Veli are both losing pace compared to Herbago and Dragon. So while Flavor had some respectable qualifying pace, it seems that in the race itself, it is just not there at all for him. Oh, there's an, an opening for Rubago on Dragon. He is looking everywhere, and he goes past. And Dragon now slow, and here comes Flavor trying to make something of it. And here comes Veli. He wants to do something as well. Oh, Veli slides really wide. Oh, oh and that's a Mercedes off. That is Herbie again. And for a second time in four laps, Herbie has spun, and now Herbie falls all the way down to 12th. And Meerkat got, has gotten by Zola as well, where he's fighting with Zola. He's not by him all the way yet. They're drag racing down the back oh. stretch. Yeah, but remember, as we've seen in uh, during the qualies, the McLaren has a very low top speed compared to the rest of the grid. Yeah, it's almost an inversion of what the McLaren's strategy has been most of the season. Most of the season, they've run very low wings and just peeled on the straightaways. This is the, fir this is the first, maybe second week where that's really not been the case. Here comes Veli on Dragon for the ninth and 10th positions, neck and neck as they go through 18. Someone has to back out into 19. Who's it going to be? It is Dragon who backs out, and this brings Flavor into a position to fight with him. Mind you, Dragon and Flavor are old rivals. Last game's <coughs> realistic series, these two were feuding it out throughout most of the season. Flavor ended up on top in that fight in the points. Dragon's been just very hit and miss with his start since then, and... Honestly, I don't know who's going to have the advantage right now because Flavor does just... He's, Flavor's significantly improved from where he was last game, but he just does not have any pace right now in this wet weather. Period. This is nothing for him. I'm watching this fight for a second, and Dr. Phil is putting so much pressure on Jeleven, and then Dragonborn is doing the same to Dr. Phil. This seems like it's... This battle for a second seems like it's going to explode any moment now. And speaking of which, there we go, oh. Dr. Phil on the outside of Jeleven coming onto the back straightaway, and Dragonborn is there, right underneath the Haas' rear wing! Dragonborn actually backs out a bit, and so does Dr. Phil, but Phil is setting himself up to make an outside overtake under braking! Oh. Under heavy braking, he oh. goes around the Contact. outside, contact! And they hit, and they crash each other! And Phil, and Jeleven, and Jeleven have crashed right in front of the field! And Phil just reset to track in the middle of it all. So that might be a penalty as well, because you're not supposed to reset to track in this series. So Dr. Phil might get a penalty for that. And now Veli gets to fight with Jelebin. Flavor has had an instant, and now Flavor has fallen to 12. But now Dragonborn is in second, and it looks like we may see another Dragonborn versus Schumacher battle on track, because I think Dragonborn might be a bit faster than Schumacher here. All 18 drivers still on track, and despite having that little incident there between a Red Bull and a Haas, uh, no one has had to pit for damage thus far today. So it's been relatively clean for this. Ooh, well, clean by the game stands. We've seen some incidents. There is a fight going on between Dr. Phil and Rubago. It's getting really close. I'm keeping an eye on that one. As Dr. Phil was almost side by side. I mean they were almost side by side in the in the S's. Looks like Rubago got the better of him. And the other thing to consider is that Veli is right there, ready to capitalize if either of those two have some instance, but we're starting to see time penalties really rack up in the middle of the field right now. Also, Meerkat has closed in on Zola again, so Red Bull and McLaren continuing to slug it out for third right now. 
Uh, I'll say this real quick. Rubago and Mentic Mirka do not have the same setup. As Rubago is capable of breaking the 300 kilometers an hour barrier at the end of the straightaway. This has been the best we've seen the McLarens performing since Spa, honestly. Herbago has, the few times he has lasted this long in the race in the last several weeks, he's not even been in the points main positions. He's running in sixth right now, Meerkat is fourth. This is what the McLaren team needs to turn around their hopes for a manufacturer's title. Driver's title isn't over yet, but it's slipping, fr it's, it's very much slipped away from Herbago. He's closer to 100 points out of the driver's lead. But uh, manufacturers-wise, this kind of performance is what they need. As of positions on the grid right now, I believe the, del the Delta in points will still be in favor of the Ferrari clan. As I'm looking for a total of 26, since Schumacher is leading and also has the fastest lap. Flavor being out of the points, Mentec Meerkat will only get 12 points and Rubago 8, as they're placing 4th and 6th. A little bit of a slide by Rubago as well. And he is still your biggest mover up the grid with 12 positions gained. The next one in line would be Veli, who gained up 9 spots. And then Dragonborn, who is currently 2nd and I believe started 9th. This fight for 3rd th <clears throat> this th this fight for third continues. Meerkat runs behind Zola, but does not have the straight line speed in that McLaren to challenge him. I think in the manufacturer's championship, though, I think the Red Bulls are poised in a decent position right now. Mm. Also, running third and seventh. Uh, seven would grant six point third, fifteen. So that means, as of now, that means a positive delta for the Red Bull client of over two points. Mm. I mean, they'll need more than this, but it is it is doable. As Schumacher gets another, again, the fastest lap time, 153.707. I thought Dragonborn had speed to match Schumacher, but that does not seem to be the case. I mean, the, the gap oh, is... And He's around and hard into the inside wall out and of he's turn out. 19. He spun there twice before. He is out of it, and that will be a full course yellow. I didn't know full course yellows were a thing in Formula 1. I expected at least a virtual safety car. Oh, we have full course yellows here but oh we, yeah, honestly, yeah, we have some people also. we have some people in pit lane is it for any damage another set of tires no, i think they're trying to get off strategy or maybe jump onto a set of intermediates uh, uh now imperium had pitted just as novelli had pitted just as the yellow was coming out so this is going to be a <coughs> massive positive windfall for him uh, for Imperium is going to be great for him also because the entire field is oh. going to get all bunched up. I'm really curious to see who's going to stay on this set of wets, who's going to go into new wets, and with 17 people, I do think we're probably going to see someone consider jumping onto intermediates and trying to make intermediates work. I don't know if the track's ready for uh, intermediates, but I can see I someone trying it. I really don't think the track is ready for intermediates because if it was the case, Schumacher, I believe Schumacher would have pitted. And well, Schumacher was past the pit lane entrance when the yellow came out. I mean, and he is, I mean, he was obviously still building speed with the full wets, so I'm not expecting anyone going to pits or intermediates as of now. Oh, and Dragonborn, drive through penalty for speeding under the safety car. So the second fastest man today now has a drive through penalty, and that will horribly, horribly impact him, and Schumacher is pitting. Oh. Schumacher is pitting. What is he going to put on? Will it be intermediates? Will it be another set of full wets? Uh, it's another set of full wets. Another set of full wets indeed. Now it looks like oh. the entire front of the grid, well, the top no, three, all pit. Meerkat, Meerkat stays out. Meerkat stays out. Curly Boy stays out. I believe that is Dr. Phil also staying out. 
So this will shake up the grid quite a bit. We do know that uh, fresh wets are going to be faster than worn wets, but it's not going to be by a massive amount. Eight laps on them, but all eight laps have been un under anger. We've not even had even fractions of slowdown until now. So, yeah, I think Schumacher will be faster than Colley and Meerkat. I'm just curious as to how quickly he's going to be able to get by him. Because thus far, Schumacher has not had to make any overtakes by himself. He's been He was overtaken by Herbie at the start of this race. And then Herbie spun himself out at turn 19. So Schumacher's not had to make any overtakes. I'm curious to see if Schumacher has a car that can actually overtake now without DRS. Other things to consider. Gleben now up into fifth. Dragonborn is sixth, and he is going to drop even farther behind because he's going to have to serve a drive-through. Uh, Flavor <coughs> is now seventh. Zola is now 8th, Farbago is still 10th, so right now, McLaren, Ferrari, and Red Bull all have all of their cars in points paying positions right now. Good. I don't think we're going to go green to lap 11, because the back of the field still has not all caught up yet. Okay, so we're starting lap 11. Yeah. Uh, as far our, well, at the moment, fastest driver on the grid, and I'm uh, talking about Schumacher. Um, I'm really, I'm expecting him to. Oh, Dragon's pitting again. Oh. So that's some intermediates. So, and he's not the only one. Fratter is also. Yeah, that's my question. Are they going to jump onto intermediates? Again, mind you. With this pit also, though, Dragonborn's going to drop to the very back of the grid, and then he has to serve a drive-through, and when he does his drive-through, he'll be well off uh, on his own. No, it's, it's, no, it's another, another set of wets. Huh. Oh, he's serving his penalty. Oh, no. Never mind. No, that was not his penalty. You can't serve a drive-through under yellow. Yeah. yeah, sorry about that. I mean, I'm confused also. I, I also I'm just as in the dark as you are, so... And Fratters did the same thing, uh, oddly enough. That, that'd be a weird move if they went back to their old sets of wets. No, it's not. It says that it's still fresh. It says that it's another set of fresh wets. So I didn't even know they had three sets of full wets in the garage for the teams. <laughs> I thought you only had one or two full sets of wets. Uh, I during, didn't realize you had three. Uh, during wet races, I believe the AFI will, will allow for four sets of wets. At least in the game, they bring not... 80, they bring 80 sets of full wet weather tires in real life, you're saying? Um, That's I'm not, uh... I'm not saying, I'm not saying real life. I think the game allows for either three or four sets. Real life is an old ball game. I think someone, someone, I think someone's taking damage. Someone's yeah, lost saw, a winglet. I saw a front end, I saw a front end plate fly around. If I think we, it might if be only Dragon we could have or Golbinator. If only we could have third person view in this game, at least in spectator mode. That it is. Been it's great. Dragon. Right front winglet knocked off his yep. car. Hmm. Now, Alright, so is... Meerkat leads the field to the restart. How does he bunch everyone up and how does Collie Boy and Schumacher respond? Meerkat doesn't even get going. Man, he's really backed the field up. And now Dr. Phil actually swerves out of line, and he's not the only one. Phil and 
Deleb and both had to swerve out of line so as not to hit other drivers because they were anticipating an earlier start. It's really caused some chaos farther back. Lebin now has to fight with Flavor for the fifth position now. Ooh, Flavor really has a lot on that. Yeah, Flavor on those older tires, so is Gilebin. Ooh. Hollyboy keeps pace with Meerkat for now. Schumacher. How aggressively is he going to attack these two ahead of him? He's on better tires, oh, yeah, and Dragon's crashed one. out. Dragon, out already. And Dave is in spin, spun as well, and the S is just a little bit farther down. Yeah, I was about to say earlier, this is, I mean, you could use and do a couple of laps with a damaged front wing, as Dragon had, but under dry conditions, under wet, this is really not something you want to play with. Since you oh, do wow. Three need... wide, coming onto the back straightaway farther back. Gilebind and Dr. Phil in a fight, but this is a mess in the mid to rear of the field. All right, coming to the party right now is Dragon. Dragon, go ahead, include your audio. Uh, not a great run. Damage front wing under the yellow, and then the car DNFs right on the restart. What happened that took you out there? Uh, I got into a little bit of scrap with uh, Dominator on the restart. Uh, we, yeah, we touched tires. I came, I came out left. Not sure who was there, but got bumped again, lost traction, and uh, just got sent in the inside wall. All right, shame to see you knocked out like this. Do you think we'll see you again in the next three races sometime soon? Uh, probably not for the remainder of the season. My uh, work schedule's been a little uh, unforgiving lately. Understand. All right. Thanks for jumping in and talking with us. Shame to see you knocked out like this. No worries. Hope you guys have a good time commentating the race. Mm -hmm. All right. Dragonborn serving his drive through penalty now, and they need to repair wings on Flavor's car. So this is not going good for Ferrari in their fight for manufacturers. Their number two driver back out of the top 10, while both Red Bulls and both McLarens are in the top seven at the moment. And Schumacher is not in a position yet where he can go and overtake Kali or Meerkat. I guess Schumacher's car, great by itself, but caught behind someone else, he just doesn't seem to be able to do anything. After his drive through Dragonborn is now back there in 14th position. He's got the freshest tires of everyone on the grid, but uh, the two people ahead of him, David and Imperium, have also relatively fresh rubber as well. I really don't know how far up the grid Dragonborn's going to be able to move. We're not quite yet to the halfway point in this race, but it's not like we have unlimited amounts of time. Uh, Zola runs behind Gelebind, but more interestingly, Dr. Phil has actually caught Schumacher for third. So the top four have all closed in, and then fifth on down to eighth are all on top of each other as well. I reckon there's more of a gap between Schumacher and Dr. Phil than Caliboy and Schumacher. Top three is pretty much in the same in the same group. Hmm. It's weird to see Schumacher had the pace while being alone and now that he has people in front. I mean you could blame the aerodynamics of the the new package. I'm thinking I about think more, I I'm think... thinking about something more related to psychology, which is now that he has I... people in front of him, he is uh, not lost in pace, but he has in his mind has given up having the pace of itself, and now he is just copying the pace of the guys in front. Hmm. I think you're probably right. All right, Dragonborn and Dave are in a drag race for 13th, but it looks like Dave has the advantage for now. Dragonborn pushing the fights on section of the track you aren't normally supposed to overtake at. Also, Zola has fallen off of Gilebin now, so it seems like both of the Haas have pace, but they both have gotten penalties thus far. Dragonborn a oh. drive through, and now Schumacher has a time penalty for track violations. Yeah, I think Schumacher's, I think it's a combination of setup and focus. Schumacher, now that he has cars in front of him, he, there's no way to really overtake in this heavy weather. Schumacher, I got to talk to him before this race. I jokingly, it was 100% a joke because it was him and like six others in the party. I jokingly brought up the idea of rain and everyone's like, no, we don't have setups for it. 
I think that shows because we're not seeing a whole lot of overtakes anywhere outside of, you know, the driver ahead making a mistake and you just try to outrun them into a braking zone. Herbago runs behind Zola right now. Still, Zola has lost touch with Jelebin, and Dr. Phil is pressuring Schumacher just as much oh. as Schumacher is pressuring Calling Boy. But the thing is, Schumacher is the only one in the top four that has time penalties at the moment. I mean, he has to find a way to get clear. Oh, he has to... Yeah. Yeah, first place, three seconds up on second place is what he needs to do. He is capable of doing it. Yellow flag, that's an Alpine that's gone around. Gominator. And that'll drop him down to the 13th, maybe even 14th position. And Schumacher is put is right there on Colin Boy, but he just can't figure out a way past him, let alone even a way to get around alongside of him. And now Dragonborn is the fastest man on the track at 153-197. I believe that is over half a second faster. And well, Dragonborn's also kind of in clean air right now. There's not really anyone directly in front of him, and he's on some of the freshest tires on the track. So I guess it's not that surprising. I will be more interested to see what he can do once he actually catches Imperium, who's just ahead of him. And if he'll be able to overtake Imperium with any speed. Herbago right behind Zola, and Veli trying to make a move on Herbago. Goes inside, goes outside, side by side into the hairpin. Herbago is ahead. Veli has a slightly better exit, but not enough to do anything. Herbago has a run on Zola now. Drag race down the back straightaway. Now earlier, her Meerkat did not have the straight line speed to overtake down the back stretch, but Herbago does. Drag race, but Herbago being very careful, backs out of it, does not want to go side by side with Zola into the corner. No change, and Dragonborn overtakes Imperium on the back straightaway. Oh, so Dragonborn way better exit in 11th. 15 from Schumacher, who's outside of Kali Boy. From it's a 16 risky move, through 18. Kali Boy on those worn tires twitches. He'll twitch right into Schumacher. He completes the pass. Brilliant move, by the way. Kali Boy's fighting back. Oh, no, he backs fighting off. Back. No, he pits. He pits. So now that is good so news now for it's Schumacher, because he is clear great now. Use. Run down on Mantic Meerkat leading. And mind you, JB Tech 11 pitted as well. So drivers who are on those worn out wet tires pitting, what tires are they going on to? That's going to be my question. Fratters, another set of full wets, and it looks like they're doing the same thing with 11. More full wets. Dragonborn now into the top 10, and he is putting pressure on Collie Boy, who has just come out of the pits. But now, Collie Boy has fresher tires than what Dragonborn has. And it doesn't matter, Dragonborn's already by Collie. Veli continues to pressure Herbago, and Herbago has lost touch with Zola. So the Red Bulls running third and fourth right now. McLaren's ranked first, first and fifth. And McLaren, I mean, Ferrari only has one driver in the podium right now. This is, Schumacher himself is not having a bad run before the Manufacturers Championship. This is going in the favor of everyone that's not Ferrari at the moment. Both McLarens are now greatly positioned to get a good amount of points over the Ferraris. And the fact that Flavor is outside the top 10 really doesn't happen is also a little bit concerning. But I guess when you get when you get caught up, caught up in incidents, especially in wet races, there's not really much you can do up there. Schumacher does not seem to be closing on Meerkat with any speed at the moment. I do uh, wonder. He, if, uh, I take that back. He just set the fastest lap. He but was, he he was, uh, Meerkat, he was six. So. He was six tenths. Um, he was six tenths away from Mantic Meerkat during the previous lap. He was 2.2 seconds off, and now he's closing in. He is second and second one. Eh, 1.7 seconds. Sorry about that. 
Wait, oh, he diggity, is cool he diggity. I'm just, he diggity is making his stuff now. Okay, so I'm just obviously looking at the data, Ron. It seemed like he wasn't getting any closer. Now I can see that he is. Uh, the thing for Schumacher, though, is how aggressively do you want to run? Do you want to burn your rubber up? Or do you want to go ahead and just, you know, be careful? Here's the big problem. Schumacher has seven, has three seconds of time penalty. Dr. Phil, who's behind him, also has time penalties. Zola, who is in fourth, does not. Oh, yellow and Zola should have one. fuel. Uh, Eggity has spun and crashed out of the pits, apparently. Uh, okay, I have never seen that happen before. But there's a first time for everything, I guess. Imperium yeah. and BTEC Jaleben fighting back there for 12th. But BTEC on the fresher rubber has the advantage. You always remember your first time, and everything that first time might be. Just saying. I don't remember the first time I drove a car. Uh, I do remember it as well. I do remember it. But back then, I did not understand the concept of a clutch. Oh dear, please tell me you didn't destroy it. Nah, I did not. It just stalled. It, just, it was just stalling again and again. But now I can drive almost anything, and I still despise automatic gearboxes. And Schumacher does improve again by a tenth, 152.950. And he, and he has closed it in on Mentic Meerkat, he is a second away. My question is, will Mantic Meerkat try and make this race last to the end on this set of wets? Because here's the thing, the longer and longer he stays ahead of Schumacher, the closer and closer they're going to become on tire wear. Grant, we oh, are expecting... Oh, three, and that's yellow, Gorminator. Gorminator again. Another spin. Man, 16, 16, 17, and 18 really do not like Gorminator. But uh, Meerkat's tire disadvantage to Schumacher will kind of level out until Meerkat's tire is past the roughly 60% wear mark. And we in the booth don't have any way to see the wear mark of the tires here. We can only just kind of assume and guess. But Meerkat and Dr. Phil are still on the same set of rubber they started this race with. With the way it's looking right now, if we don't have any yellows to the end, I don't know if Meerkat and Dr. Phil can make it to the end on rubber. If we do have yellows, they have no reason not to pit. And then I think the advantage in this race goes to Zola and Herbago, because Herbago continues to get alongside Zola on the back straight. But this is the first time he's pressured the issue coming out of it. And the McLaren trying to get ahead of the Red Bull. It's still on for fourth. Mind you, this is a spot for second in Drivers' Championship and a spot for the Constructors' fight as well. And I think Herbago's going to get him. Yes, Herbago's finally by Zola. And he will gain two points. Oh, yellow flag sector two. Gulminator again. again. Exit of 11. So Herbago seems to have gotten some of his mojo back. Oh, big slide out of turn 20, though. And Schumacher's forward momentum has stalled out behind Meerkat at about 1.2 uh -huh. seconds. I'm seeing something on Schumacher's telemetry that would indicate a pit stop at the end of this lap, weirdly enough. Oh, and three second time penalty for Zola as well. What are you seeing that would indicate that? Because I can't uh, see anything on the telemetry of uh, no. I, I see the uh, the wrench and the screwdriver uh, lighting blue. Or maybe that's just uh, my uh, my heads up display was fucked. Uh, sorry. I the mean, you could be right. But I could I, be wrong. I don't know. You could be right. Yeah, you could be wrong. Also, who knows? Uh, but Meerkat has the exact same thing on his heads-up display. In fact, everyone in the field has that. So it might mean and said that everyone has a alternate strategy ready to go if a yellow flag comes out. Or in the case of Meerkat and Dr. Phil, when they make stops. Because again, I really don't see Meerkat oh. and Dr. Phil making it to the end Dr. on Phil this really, set of Dr. Phil really dropped times. off the back end of Schumacher at the moment. 
Yeah. Weirdly 4. enough... 4.6 seconds off, and yeah. Schumacher's closed in just a bit. By only about a tenth this lap, but he's closed yeah. in a bit. Oh, yellow flag, six for two. Yellow Gulminator flag, Gulminator again. again. Phil has pitted, so out of third place is, comes Dr. Phil. He wants off these worn, wet tires. My question is, how far down the grid is he going to fall? And it's another set of full wets. Now, Phil will be on the freshest tires to the end at this point, unless Meerkat pits. But Phil is going to fall all the way down to 10th, last of the points paying positions. He's going to be faster than the people ahead of him. So this is not over for them yet. Uh, Red Bull could still walk out here with a decent chunk of points. Now, Zola is behind Herbago, and Zola has a time penalty. Schumacher also has a time penalty, but he's second behind Meerkat. Right now, Schumacher is just betting on Meerkat not making it to the end on these tires. But we're within the last 10 laps of this race. Um, I don't know. Because Meerkat has an advantage. Meerkat, oh, if there's a yellow, yellow flag, flags if there's a yellow flag, Meerkat could stay out. Herbago would hound Schumacher, and Meerkat could scoot away with a win. So for Meerkat, I think he might want to actually to see a yellow because he knows that Schumacher would be struggling fighting drivers behind. And with time penalties, Meerkat could walk off with a win. This race looks like it's brought the McLarens back to life. All they needed. Now I say that Schumacher's All closer to Meerkat now than he's been for a Texas. while. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Now Schumacher is closer to Meerkat than he has been the last lap or two. Watching Schumacher at the moment on the TV cam mounted on top of the rolling hoop. Oh, I'm seeing a little bit of struggle with the grip all around the track. I am some I am seeing glimpses of four wheels of four wheel drifting. Which is not what you want to see in these type of cars, obviously. Oh, Zola in the pits now. So Zola is once off of his tires. Are they going to throw intermediates on, or are they just going to throw another set of full wets on? That's another set of full wets. And Zola will now drop to last of the points paying positions. And Dave also pits, so this will promote BTEC 11 into 11th, Flavor into 12th. If there are some accidents near the front, we could still see a Ferrari in the top 10. Uh, well, two Ferraris in the top 10, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen right now. Dr. Phil now behind Fratters, but my Fratters has 10 lap worn wets. Phil is on relatively fresh ones. And then Zola is nine seconds behind Phil as well, so Zola could be in a position where he might be able to steal fastest lap from Schumacher. Again, all of Schumacher's fastest laps have been set with older tires and behind other cars, so Zola, if he wants to steal fastest lap point, this will be his best chance to do so. Phil... Going against Fratters. Fratters defends the inside. Phil goes to the outside, neck and neck, under braking. The Red Bull not in a position to get alongside, coming out of the corner, though. At the front, Meerkat continues to lead, but for how much longer is he going to do this? Is he is Meerkat really going to try and go to the end on this set of rubber? Dominator again. It's a good thing we're not doing a drinking game for every time Galminator crashes. We'd be uh, under the table by now. <laughs> Might as well apologize Please. to the little man for that. Because that, I mean, he is clearly struggling. That, is, that isn't something I wish for. Dragonborn, fastest lap! Oh, wow, Dr. Phil, big dive bomb on Fratter is in turn 20 as well! And he's got power by! No, he's not! They make contact! They're side by side! They're calling each other! Somehow, they can't from turning each other into the outside wall. But that was about as close to an accident as you can get. But in the end, Dr. Phil will get by Fratters. No, not yet, Fratters. Fratters still has a position. Dr. Phil now has another time penalty. Fratters still ahead of Dr. Phil. So even with fresher tires, you can't seem to gain positions, it would appear. 
So maybe Meerkat does have the right strategy to just run this set of wets to the end. He knows that Schumacher can't get by him. Schumacher might actually be falling off. I think Meerkat's going to win. I don't think Meerkat's going to pit to the end. I think Meerkat's going to win with this set of rubber. He is, he is clearly getting faster than Schumacher at the moment. Oh, yellow flag, second one. That's it. Hey, diggity, diggity. I believe. Dragonborn closing in on Veli. Fight for fourth. He's got his car most of the way ahead, but Veli steams back up side by side as they come out of the corner. Dragonborn trying to recover from that drive through penalty. Bit of contact between the two of them as they go into the slow speed sector. A little bit of wing to wheel contact, but Dragonborn's wing still looks like it's okay. Mind you, Dragonborn has no time penalties. If he can keep it in touch with Veli, he'll get his spot. Paging Dr. Phil has finally gotten by Fratters, but oh. it's taken so Veli much spitting. longer than what Phil was in Twitch. Very spitting. Will they put on another set of fresh wets, or will they go on to intermediates? Because here's the thing, we're now starting to see people who have tires at the same life of Schumacher pitting at this stage. So and that's another set of wets. Yes, yeah, another set of full wets. I I see no way that Schumacher wins unless Meerkat suffers a catastrophic tire failure right now. Schumacher doesn't have the pace to keep up with Meerkat anymore. Despite the fact that Meerkat is on the same tire as he started with, Meerkat is walking away from Schumacher at this stage in the event. Do pointing out also that Mantic Meerkat is probably better prepared for a wet race than Schumacher. Mm -hmm. But he is considerably slower than him on the straightaways. Yeah, higher down for setup will really, really help with grip and entire life around here. Schumacher's closed back in a little bit, but it seems like Schumacher, for any consistent period of time, can't get that close to Meerkat, not, especially not close enough to really put any pressure on him. I think for Meerkat, the question is not going to be, can Schumacher get by him? It seems obvious he can't. The question is just going to be, can Meerkat make these tires survive? He's going to cross the line with six laps to go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, six laps to go at the line. But a great turnaround from the McLaren team. It looks like they're en route to finish first and third. Although Dragonborn definitely wants to make that a little bit frustrating because Dragonborn is closed up behind Herbago. Last time Dragonborn was behind Herbago on a wet weather track, Herbago crashed out of the lead. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. Herbago seems to have his head in the right place. And it's Dragonborn who has to reach forward and overtake that McLaren. Zola is an eighth behind Fratters right now. Fratters is on very worn, wet tires. So I think Zola will have the advantage in that, but we saw even with Dr. Phil how long it takes to overtake someone here, even with fresher rubber. Track position is so, so important. Herbago is not closing on Schumacher at all, and Schumacher continues to stay within about two seconds of Meerkat. So I think our top three are all locked in unless we have a yellow flag. Uh, Dragonborn now trying to make something happen on Herbago as they go down the back straightaway. Now, a reminder, Herbago has a setup, really, really low wings going fast in a straight line. So if Dragonborn wants to get by, he'll have to figure out some other way past. Real quick, as I look at our top two, Meerkat has 38% ERS. Schumacher has... 48. So Schumacher has a small advantage in the ERS fight. In the fight for third, Herbago 86%, Dragonborn 29. So Herbago massive ERS advantage in that fight for third. Zola has gotten by Veli at this stage in the race. So Red Bulls are starting to cut their way back up through the grid, but it looks like the Red Bulls will end up with a net loss 
if they finish where they are now. The other thing to consider is that time penalties are going to have a massive impact as well as I swap it from time to penalties. Dr. Phil, who is six, has a nine second time penalty that would drop him almost out of the top 10, I believe. Well, not all the way out of the top 10 because a lot of the drivers behind him also have time penalties, but they'll probably drop him back to about seventh or eighth. Uh, Fratters has six seconds of time penalties. Collie Boy and Zola both have three seconds. Veli has six seconds. Glevin oh, has six, six seconds. For Fratters. Yeah, six for Fratters now. And then Flavor also has three seconds of time penalties. So yeah, we could see a little bit of shaking in the back half of the points paying positions here, just due to time penalties. Uh, if Meerkat pulls this off, going all day long on one set of tires without stopping, I will n be so, so impressed like you could not believe. And it honestly looks like he's going to do it. I, we are coming down. It will be four laps to go at the line. I cannot believe the masterclass that he's put on. The McLarens have put on some incredible drives this season. None of them, I think, would be more incredible than what Meerkat's trying to pull off here. But it's in fate's hands now. Uh, Zola is dealing with Veli, fighting back against him. And Delevin and Flavor are also closing in as well. So this could get interesting because this is for points paying positions. 8th through 11th have all caught each other here. Ooh. Veli runs himself out of ERS down the back straight away. But can't get alongside Zola. Zola has an ERS advantage over Veli. Ooh. And then Delevin has an advantage over Veli as well. Dragonborn can't seem to do anything to Herbago right now. And Zola now gets by Fratters. So Fratters fighting with Veli on track. Bit of contact between the Alpine and the Williams, potentially. And Fratters, with nine seconds of time penalty, has dropped to nine. So he is at risk of getting, walking out of here with no points just due to the way time penalties are looking to shape up. Here comes Jaleben. Big dive on the Alpine in turn one. And he's by. Fratters has lost the plot, it would appear. Veli continues to pressure Zola. And Dr. Phil has gotten far enough of it at Zola that even with the time penalties, Phil should still be able to finish in the sixth position. Also at the front, Schumacher has gotten back within a second of Meerkat. Granted, it's in the very slow parts of the circuit where aerodynamics don't matter. Because here's the thing. But here's the thing. Schumacher is also in a position where he does need to watch his tires as well. It's not like Meerkat's out there the only one worried about tires. Schumacher is tire has been on these ru this rubber for a while. He also needs to start worrying about his rubber. Also, the fact that he's barely stays ahead of flavor. Yeah. So many different battles on track right now. It's hard to keep track of all of them. Mercedes in 12th is positioning himself to potentially walk out of here with points because he is closing in on this massive dogfight that's taken place from 7th back to 11th. And all of those drivers have time penalties. Mercedes does not. So Flavor, I don't think he's going to get any points out of this because Mercedes is going to jump everyone. And I don't think Flavor is close enough to jump over the drivers ahead. Uh, this is going to be a really, really bad time for Ferrari. Schumacher's dropped off of Meerkat again. It's three laps to go. So they're more than likely, we, weren't, we aren't going to see any more yellows to the end of this race. It's I'm not, it's honestly not over shocked. It's over. Be careful. Yeah, well, I'm honestly shocked that we still have 16 of our 18 starters still with us. And even if everyone started crashing and cutting tires and failing now, the fact that we've gone this far with this main car is still with us is honestly very impressive. I expected way worse from a wet race at Coda. E Diggity has an instant again in Sector 3, but he gets back underway without worrying about Imperium or Galminator catching him. Dragonborn still running oh. right behind Herbago. But Herbago has a full tank of ERS, and Dragonborn is playing with only about a quarter of his. 
So there's just nothing that Dragonborn can seem to do. Herbago has a Sept that's faster in a straight line as well. There's just nothing the Haas can do. Veli, another time penalty. And Veli is losing touch with Zola now. Oh, looks like Schumacher is... runs behind... Looks like Schumacher is catching up to Meerkat. He is... Turn 19, and he is below second. He is 17th behind. Mm -hmm. oh. Two laps to go at the line. Meerkat and Schumacher are almost dead even on the air. Schumacher has a very, very small advantage. But again, even if Schumacher gets by Meerkat, Schumacher has a time penalty. Meerkat does not. Track position has just been keen throughout the majority of the day today. All right, this fight for 10th, I think, is pretty much already decided because Mercedes runs 12th, but he has no time penalties. Flavor and Fratters both do. So I think this is, fight is pretty much just for, mer for merit and bragging rights more than anything else. There's no one there seems to be. A Dragonborn has gotten the closest he has been to Herbago this entire time. Through the S's. So the McLarens are definitely struggling in the S's. But they have enough straight line speed to negate that for now. And Dragonborn gets a time penalty. It's over. McLaren is going to finish one, two, one, and third, one and three, and that will really pump some life oh. back into their manufactured championship hopes. Schumacher was lo was looking for an overtake at the end of the backstretch, and he is within he is within touch now. He is the closest he's ever been to the McLaren. Which also might be a strategy from Mantic Meerkat as um, as you're settling down on your pace and having a secure run till the line. But this will be Meerkat's it... last time to cross pit lane entrance. He stays out. So it is official. Meerkat is going to make this set of full wet weather tires last an entire race. He just needs to hope that there's no catastrophic failures here. Mercedes gets by Flavor and gets by Fratters on the track. Fratters may have taken damage or something because now he's losing a position of Flavor. But with all these time penalties, uh, the middle to back of the points main positions are going to kind of be up in the air. Dr. Dr. Phil! Phil! has stolen fastest lap from Schumacher. Uh, I believe it was from Dragonborn. Oh, you're right, from Dragonborn, you're right. And by quite the margin, if I remember correctly. Coming out of the back straight for the last time are your leaders. Burning through all their ERS. Meerkat's out of ERS. He is, he is within attack range. Oh, here comes Schumacher! Meerkat fights back. Oh, a little bit of contact. I heard Schumacher that. Schumacher was denied a win at Suzuka. So denied a win at Zanvort. Try, it looks like he's going to be denied a win here as well. Because while Schumacher is going to get by Meerkat in the last lap, Schumacher has a time penalty that Meerkat does not. Meerkat just needs to be smart, and he'll win this race by default. Just two more corners left. He is looking in. Not going to make it, because he knows that at the line, Meerkat is going to win with tires that he started with. Incredible drive by Meerkat. Schumacher will come home second. And the manufactured Ferrari team will take a huge hit. Herbago is going to come home third. Dragonborn will recover from a drive through penalty to finish fourth. And now this is where things are going to start getting interesting. Collie Boy is basically locked into fifth. I think Dr. Phil is locked into sixth. Zola should be locked into seventh.
Veli in eighth. Deleb in ninth. Oh, and Mercedes and is already in points bank position. He is way far back. But he'll get a point irregardless. And then the rest of the spots are for dragging rights. Flavor takes home 11th. Dave will be 12th. Edigity 13th. Fratters will be uh, oh, probably around 15th. Oh, Fratters is blot a tire. Fratter. Uh, so Meerkat made it to the end without pitting, and his tire survived. But Fratters has a tire go down on the last lap. Not to take away from Meerkat, but for Fratters, that's some BS. I believe he'll be able to make it with this flat tire before being within touching range of Galminator. Still an absolute masterclass by the Ferrari team, by any metric, it doesn't matter what you say, going the entire race on one set of rubber, and a little bit of luck played into it also, apparently, but I cannot believe what they pulled off today. All right, coming into the party right now is your race winner, Mantic Meerkat. Meerkat, go ahead, include your audio. You finished this race on the same set of tires you started with without pitting. What do you have to say about that fantastic strategy call and win today, mate? All right, well, a fantastic drive. McLaren comes home first and third. So is this it? Is McLaren back? Is McLaren back in black in the sack? You know, going to kick, kick ass and taste names? Or is this just a one-off? Are you guys honestly back, or is this just a lucky, fluky one-off? That's the real question I have. Yeah, this will definitely close you in significantly in the manufacturer's fight, bring home. It, this won't make, give you back the lead, but it will close you in significantly. All right, so next week is Mexico. What are your anticipations for the team there? All right, well, mate, great job on the win. I cannot say enough how incredible it is that you were able to pull that off. You've pulled off, you, both of you McLarens have pulled off some master classes, but that, I think, is probably going to go down in the record books, mate. Congratulations. I also want to go ahead and talk with our second place finisher, Schumacher SF7. Schumacher, you were the first driver to cross the line. Uh, you, in clean air, you were untouchable, unstoppable, but it seemed like you did not have the ability to make any overtakes on the circuit. You come home second, but your manufacturer's championship lead is going to take a huge hit. What do you have to say about your run today? Don't need to do much more than come home second, third, or fourth, or fifth. The titles, well, I don't give a crap about the win. Make that, make I can have it. <laughs> I just need to come home in the points, and I've won the title. So that's all I'm focusing on now. What about the, what about the manufacturer's title? No, oh, the, the clowns will bottle it eventually. So. <laughs> 
They got right. number one bottle job in the league, so. They make it. <laughs> so there's there's plenty of walls around Mexico, so find one. Please do, please do. Uh, but yeah, all right. Um, yeah, drove the car. Uh, I could have overtaken Meerkat five or six laps before, but I thought <clears throat> there's no point overtaking him. I don't need don't need to win. So I just sat back and just. And then, and then you'll start to struggle, and then I thought, oh, I better pit. It's like pit a dog out of his misery when he's ill. So I thought, better go past him, go across the line, take a moral victory, and then have the count back. <laughs> but he did try to send it up All my right. inside, so. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It got me a little bit concerned there. All right, a second place finish here. A uh, second place finish last week as well. Yeah. Uh, next week is Mexico. Another second. What are you anticipating for yourself next week? Uh, let's go that long straight. The McLarens love long straights, but they don't like corners so much. So I'm expecting them to be rapid in the straight line. But through the S's at Mexico, there's some walls around there, so I think it might as well they might as well pay the team now the damage money. So, All right. Yeah. Big confidence. Yeah. But I mean, you do have a significant lead in the championship. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you will actually continue to extend your championship lead as it stands. Out of the way, second place finish, not a win, but a well, you will get at least the point for pole position yeah. and the 18 for second. Good job, mate. Great yes. to talk with you. Yes. And that will pretty much wrap up our broadcast here from Coda. I will be broadcasting the X2 race in about an hour's time. I've been joined today by PZ French from Man. PZ, it's been great to have you with us. One more race for XRL here at Coda this weekend. If you don't want to join, I understand. I've been your host, Insane Leader 13. Thank you very much for watching today. And goodbye. Let me shut the stream.